Hey, and the Oscar goes to Titanic. Today on the table we have, well, you, I have you only watch. I have two new, brand new, they are probably not yet available in the, in the shops. GPS modules from Matek. They are called M8Q5883 and uh, some M8Q. What's the difference? What's so special? And uh, and yeah, what the hell? The hell, the hell number three. This is the work horse for the INAF and not only can INAF community. It's the Baytian BN880 GPS. Proven working mostly great. And this one is the bigger of the two new Matic GPSs. This one is slightly smaller, well, smaller in a slightly different form, chapter, form factor. You get the difference? You can fit almost two of those instead of, no, instead of one of this previous generation bigger. Lower profile, lower weight. Let, 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 let me just show you. Um, okay, calibrated. How much? 13 grams. This one. Ta -da! 8 grams. This one. 7 grams. Almost. Almost, because not uh, exactly half a weight. Is there a price to pay? Mm. Those are different GPS modules from Ublox. This one uses the M8N, which Neo M8N, which is a software updatable, slightly higher sensitivity, slightly better, slightly bigger, and uh, slightly heavier. This one, though, is the SAM M8Q. The main difference for the regular user is that if you really, really want to, on this one, you can update the firmware to something newer. But honestly, how often do you do it? I, I did this exactly zero times. On those smaller ones, you cannot update the firmware. You just plug them and, and they work. They are almost almost identical in terms of the protocol possibilities and, and stuff like that. And uh, they are, let's be honest, slightly better in our hobby, because instead of putting something like this, something that, that big on an airplane on a quad, you can just put this one or this one. What's the difference between two of those? Mm, this one, which is called just uh, some M8Q, has no magnetometer and has the flat bottom surface. It's very good option for aeroplanes because with INAF on an aeroplane you do not need a magnetometer. It's just not required. You can fly, should fly without it. So if there is no need for a magnetometer you can just go with this one. You need only one serial port. The cable, they got me two cables with a nice uh, silicone silicon isolation very nice cable by the way and yeah this one though it's the the one with the i2c connected qmc5883 it's not hmc5883 by honeywell because they don't make them anymore for years and you are usually buying counterfeits and, and clothes and stuff like that but this is let's say um legit legit, almost identical uh, to HMC, QMC5883 works just fine. Instead of one connector, on this one you have two connectors and this is not four pins but six pins because there is uh, two pins for I2C. So we get plus five volt ground, TX, RX, I, SDA, SCL. And here there's a second connector because you have two cables and if you want to connect the different I2C device, you can just make a pass through from this. Nice option, nice option. I just received them only a few days ago, so uh, as you can see, I had no time to put them on any of my flying contraptions. I only tested them on the bench. 
connected them to the youth center, uh, took some measurements, and uh, they... I have a feeling that still the BN880 is slightly more sensitive, because usually I was able to catch slightly more uh, satellites, but still I'm living in the middle of a very big city, in the middle of a Berlin. There's a building over there, building over there, I'm inside, there's a tree, so I, you cannot really see the sky and there's not a very good chance that the, the satellite will be passing, so I don't know yet. Um, I expect that the, on the field there will be very little difference and 15, 16 uh, satellites should be very easily uh, obtainable, so it should work. It should work just fine. The, the bench test was almost... <laughs> No visible difference between between those small and the bigger one. Like I said, this one probably has slightly higher sensitivity. So in some cases you might get one or two more satellites, but besides that, that they are, they really should be 100% comparable. Yeah. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, GPS, uh, the Russian, uh, how it's called the Russian system, is the GLONASS, uh, Galileo should be working, uh, Beidou from Japan or, no, from China, QMZ, uh, prob all the major navigation systems should be there. That's all for today. In the description of this video you will see that I started something I call the excellent shopping list. This is the place where I put recommendations for the things in for the, our FPV community. Uh, fixed wings, drones, cameras, antenna building and, and stuff like that. It's still undergoing. When I put recommendations for the things I really think are worth considering. I do not put everything over there because I I would like you, to, I take my word that this is probably a good stuff. This one is already on the list because it's proven I have like six, seven, maybe even up to, no, eight, maybe not, uh, six at least, those units of Baytian BN880 and they are working just great. Those smaller ones from Matek, not there yet. Not there yet. If they will be proven that they are really cool and, and worth the effort, they will definitely lend them. Go check this up. It's very short list yet, but will grow probably on a daily basis. And uh, consider becoming my Patreon. Thumbs up, subscribe. Yeah, you know the drill. Until the next one. Ciao, ciao. Oh, yes, it's whiskey. Ciao.